Thank you, Maria. Welcome to the booth here at the Neon Dynasty Championship. Marshall Sutcliffe with Cedric Phillips. Thanks so much for joining us for Alchemy. Cedric, our first look at Alchemy here is nigh upon us. This is, um, you know, the first time it's been on the big stage. It is, and what better way to start than what we could argue is the deck to beat coming in, right? Naya Runes. We get to find out a little small sample size here, Marshall, but nonetheless, hey, is this deck as good as everybody thought it was going to be coming in? Because Let's just use this match. This is going to decide. This is it, it right? This yeah. kind of decides it if this is the real deal or not. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I'll, sample I'll, size I'll, is highly overrated. Kenji Samura right. uh, from Japan versus Riku Kumagai, also from Japan. Also worth noting that these players tested together on the Japanese super team. And uh, boom, straight away round one. You know, you always got to battle against the person you came to the tournament with. It's just how magic works. And it looks like we're going to be underway here on the bottom part of your screen. That's the Hall of Famer, Kenji Samura. And uh, he has chosen Naya Runes. What do you make of the opener here with a pair of generous visitor in hand there for Samura? I think, so good opening hand here from Kenji to just kick things off. I mean, you've got a couple copies of Generous Visitor. You've got a mana base that works. Runeforge Champion is kind of your payoff card. All that is lovely, right? Here's what's interesting to me, Marshall. These players test it together, they're friends, all that stuff. I know leading into this event, we've talked about this super team that Japan has built over the past handful of months and years, right? Well, one player and a lot of these Japanese players and Kenji and everybody else on the team is playing Naya Runes, but Riku is going, no, no. No, no, no. I'm playing Rakdos Midrange. So does Riku have the deck that beats the Runes deck on the team or not? That's my question. This is going to be the awkward. <laughs> it is, Riku right? Riku wins, is... right? It's like, really, Riku? Come on, man. This is the, hey, man, we all brought Runes and you brought the thing that beats Runes. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. That's right. You see Forsaken Crossroads there from Kenji Samura, one of the alchemy cards coming in since he ends up being on the draw this time, he gets the choice when he ETBs of uh, scrying one or uh, just untapping it. And uh, he gets to choose a color that it taps for. On the other side, though, we see Rahilda wanted Cutthroat on the battlefield, already a big threat. Uh, the good news here for Kenji Samura is if you can get those generous visitors going, you know, they spew counters all over all of your creatures. The bad news is he's going to have to take a hit here from the first striker, and that's going to exile a card uh, straight away. Although he can only cast it if he's tacked with the Wolf of Werewolf uh, during that turn. And with no mana left over, he decides not to pass his turn back. But we can see that Riku Kumagai is sitting on a Hagramaling uh, here. And uh, looks like he wants to deploy some, some removal. And nothing too troubling at this stage. Now we're going to see Skyclave Apparition. So this is a little bit of an innovation here from the Japanese players on their build of runes. Taking a look at the builds of runes over the course of the weekend. Again, it's the second most played deck here in Alchemy. We're going to see plenty of it over the next handful of days. But not everybody is starting this card. Japanese players here, like Kenji, do have, looks like, up to three copies in their main deck, an additional one in the sideboard. So maybe that's a way to break open the mirror and maybe get an advantage against the model white decks that are incredibly prevalent here this weekend as well. City Soccer Connoisseur, one of the key cards in the format here, is going to take away the Room 4 Champion there out of hand and leave a 3-3 Death Toucher. And Cedric, this is a big deal. Death Touch is actually kind of a problem for Kenji Samura. A lot of the time, his creatures just end up being really, really big but can't really deliver the finishing blow, and they just end up trading off for cards like City Soccer Connoisseur. Well, think about what these runes do, right? You've got one that grants Trample, you've got one that grants Lifelink, you've got one that grants Haste, a little bit of buff on the ones that grant Trample and Haste as they are red and green. But I didn't say First Strike. I didn't right. say Flying. I didn't say Unblockable. So Death Touch, weirdly, is kind of the cheat around this whole thing of, cool, your creature's enormous. Well, I'm just going to give it a little taste, and that's going to die. That's right. And, you know, going back to what you said before about the Skyclave Apparition inclusion, you know, normally these decks are all in. Right, they're just like I am going to do the rune thing the best way I, and the fastest way I possibly can, and that means that cards like Apparition, which is you know, one of the better cards that we've seen in these type of decks. Ooh, there's Goldspan Dragon hitting the battlefield. By the way, for by the way for Kuma guy, you know it's wow, it's going to get Iconjoed right out of here too. Yeah, see you later. Dang, that's really nice use of Iconjo there. Now this this was this is what I was thinking the entire time was hey this is a rune stack right are we ever gonna are we ever gonna draw one of those yeah or... how about a rune <laughs> yeah how about that there we go but but again this is part of what Kenji gives up by playing cards like Skyclave Apparition right it's not an enchantment it's not a rune it doesn't interact with the other stuff in a meaningful way so you do water down your deck a little bit for that power level. 
So now we're going to do a little bit of chaining, ideally. Would have loved to go rune into rune, but you saw Generous Visitor dish out a little bit of counter action. Now Kami of Transients can decide if it wants to attack or not and then come back. Again, as you've already discussed and you and I have touched on, Death Touch is kind of the roadblock here. So if you are going to make this attack, yeah, you're going to get the City Stalker kind of sore off the battlefield, but you're going to have to exchange some resources to do so. So Kenji's hand isn't all that powerful, but, he, but so that makes it so he has a real decision to make at this exact moment. You can see he's already managed to put nine power and toughness on the battlefield here. He can also play the Jukai Naturalist out of hand if he'd like. It is an enchantment creature. Again, this is the core of the deck, right? These Everything's an enchantment. The creatures are enchantments. They trigger all these generous visitors. The runes trigger everything. And you can have these turns that are completely insane, particularly if you assemble the combo, right? The Jukai Naturalist plus the champion. That's kind of the one-two punch that makes all your runes free. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that Jukai Naturalist is, a, is an enchantment as well, because when you think of the runes deck, you think of, oh, okay, well, obviously the runes are enchantments, and Showdown of the Skulls is an enchantment, but the Naturalist is too, uh, and there are positives and negatives to that. Of course, positive is Trigger's Generous Visitor, negative is that enchantment rule can kind of kill it. So some upsides and downsides to that very powerful card. Once again, another Goldspan Dragon's going to hit the battlefield. As you can see, this is the alchemy version. But it yeah, still some, it's still good. Swords. It's still really good. <laughs> yeah, some minor changes, but still really powerful. Yeah, it was. It, we call it rebalanced. That's the that's what we're saying, and it, yep. it has been rebalanced slightly in the downward direction. But it was already starting from a pretty high standpoint there. Yeah, this thing is still a five mana four four flying haste. When it attacks, you're going to get that treasure token, and then treasure tokens still have sacrifice this artifact, add two mana of any one color. The only real difference here you're going to find, for those of you who are used to standard, is that when it gets targeted, it's no longer going to make a treasure. That interaction of attack with my goldspan dragon, someone tries to kill it, and you go, thanks for the mana, counter that. Eh, we're not going to do that so much anymore. Not so much. So Kenji deciding, yeah, you know what? Trade seems fine by me. And one of the death touchers gets to do its thing. Now we're going to see a braid kill the Skyclave Apparition while the killing's good. Yep. And that's going to result in a 2-2 on the other side of the battlefield. Here comes Kami of Transients times two. So, boy, the stage is set here, Cedric. We need to see some art, uh, some enchantments come off the top of the library here for Samura. Yeah, right now, if you're Samura, your best draws are a rune to maybe trigger into a, maybe chain into another rune because you're going to get a lot of triggers off of that. But more importantly, I'm thinking Showdown of the Skulls, Marshall. Four of those in the deck. If you're able oh. to find one copy of that, oh. probably going to be able to go absolutely crazy. And that is the hope right now if you are Samura. Showdown of the Skulls off the top for Samura would be fantastic. Down to 14, he falls after taking all the damage here. Goldspan in with flying, but even the 2-2 token gets through. Here's Graveyard Trespasser now from Kumagai. He also has another one of those in his hand, as well as Scorching Dragonfire. And I don't want to under I don't want to undersell Commune with Spirits also being a good draw right now. Looking at the top four cards for a single green, take a land, mm -hmm. or more importantly, an enchantment with you. He's playing three copies of that card too. And heck, Runeforge Champion can also get the chain going. So let's see what the draw is. Uh, I mean, it's a creature it land. It is. Doesn't line up particularly well with Gold Span, does it? It doesn't, and more importantly, Graveyard Trespasser is going to be doing a little transforming, and this is where things are going to get a little ugly. You see this card being highlighted right now. Get a good read on the Graveyard <laughs> Trespasser that's going to transform into a much larger problem. That's right. Going to pick up another point of power and toughness. There are four fours now. And uh, Riku Kumagai, thanks to the, the brick wall there from Kenji Samura, he just hasn't been able to find... Anything to truly go off. I mean, geez, a rune off the top of the library here would be so much. An extra card plus four counters just flying around. He even has the Jukai Naturalist, which has lifelink. It could help him stem the bleeding, but he said it was just a land off the top, and Kumagai is the aggressor. Now, if you're wondering what Graveyard Trespasser, do Trespasser excuse me, does when it transforms, first, first of all, gets a better name in Graveyard Glutton. So but, that's step yeah. one. Step Who's two... Hungry? Yeah, step two, ward. You have to discard a card to be able to even try to kill this thing. Uh, and then when it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to two target cards from graveyards for each creature card. Exile this way. Each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So when this thing is attacking, it means business. And it is. Both of them are in there. Gold span. And look, you can even target yourself with the other graveyard glutton trigger. And we're going to see Kenji Samura's life total plummet here. Down to 10, down to 8. 
He's already taking four in the air no matter what, and he's going to be in chump block mode here, Cedric. This is looking terrible for Samura. Yeah, you got a lot of stuff coming through on the battlefield. So as you mentioned, it is going to be chump block mode. Generous Visitor is going to get hit by Infernal Grasp here. And Kenji, he knows he's out of this one. Wow. What a turnaround for Riku Kuma guy. Decent start there for Samura. But we really didn't get to see him do the runes thing, Cedric. That was the bottom line. He, he cast some spells. He got a couple of triggers. But with double Generous Visitor on the open, you kind of hope to have some 7-7s. Seven and he never really got there. No, didn't really get there at all. Didn't get to see the deck do what it's meant to do. But you got to remember here this weekend, Marshall, and we're going to talk about this ad nauseum, I'm sure, either you and me or, or Alien Mani. In Alchemy, this was the deck to beat going in. Everybody knew it. That's why we're seeing a lot of cards that are specific towards beating it, be it creature removal, enchantment removal, Archon of Emeria, what have you. The big question is, is can this deck stand up to being targeted as heavily as it's being targeted? Because we know that if no one's paying attention to it, it's going to buzzsaw through a tournament but that's not what's going on here that's right it it has a reputation of being a deck that's uh very very powerful but very narrow in other words it is targetable if you decide that you'd like to to approach a format in a way where you're going to have answers or a, a strategy that's good against runes you can do that and people did <laughs> like i I'm kind of worried for the runes players as powerful Same. as the deck is. Like it really got targeted by the other major decks in this tournament. Yeah, no, this is no joke. As we, you and I, of course, and the rest of the team had the opportunity to look at the deck lists and see, okay, what the heck's going on in Alchemy? And it's like, okay, well, runes looks pretty good, pretty straightforward, all that jazz. But then you see the other deck list and you go, oh, oh, uh oh, 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 oh everybody knows. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, everybody <laughs> knows that runes is good. So now, of course, the big question is, is can runes stand up to the hate? right? Is it, is it flexible enough? You know, does it have that sort of resistance built in? And I'll tell you, we didn't see it last game in Showdown of the Skulls, but if Showdown of the Skulls had shown up in that game, maybe what we're talking about right now is a different story entirely. Absolutely. That's really the key here. Let's get things underway. There's Ranger class off the top of the library, and Kenji's going to be happy to see it as that's going to give him a nice little turn two play here to get that Ranger class rolling. He can also put out a threat that he doesn't mind dying quite as much as perhaps the Kami. Let's see what happens going forward. Land, land here for Kumagai. Ooh, there's a Naturalist and a Runeforge champion with double runes in hand. Now he is facing both black and red mana from Kumagai, so he probably yep. can't assume these cards are going to stick around, or these creatures, I should say. But Yeah, and, and we are, of course, talking about Kenji Samura here. We're talking about a Magic Hall of Famer. He's been around the block a game or two, so not surprising to see no rune be cast just yet and say, let's do a little bit more setup. Let's play Runeforge Champion, dig a little something out of the deck, and get ready for a bigger turn down the road. That's right. This is a really safe play here from Kenji. Yes, his Runeforge Champion is unlikely to survive the turn, but the fact that he gets to get a rune out of his library here means that he can take it. Still, still two for one for him. And there's an Abrade to, to take down the Runeforce Champion. Kumagai, of course, recognizes he cannot leave that alone. And here's one of the key cards for this mid-range uh, Rakdos deck. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Cedric. This card has such high potential that people are putting it into decks even where it's, it's like the only red splash card. That's not the case here, but uh, there's some other decks we might see later on that have it. Yeah, it's kind of wild, right? If you're not playing runes, you're not playing mono white aggro, a lot of the chance, there's a very high chance, excuse me, that you're playing a, a sort of red based control deck around Goldspan Dragon and around Fable the Mirror Breaker because this card is incredibly powerful. Start things off by making a 2 2 that can generate treasures, plural. Then we're talking about this second ability on the saga, which is to discard two cards and draw two cards. Of course, when you're playing a mid range deck, you're trying to hedge against everything. So some cards, like removal, are going to be good in some matchups and poor in others. So and maybe you're flooding out. Maybe you don't need creatures at this time. So you'll be able to kind of stabilize your draw a little bit. And then, uh, you know, if life's going really well, you're copying, you know, connoisseurs and goldspan dragons. You're having a blast after that thing transforms. So it's a really powerful card. We're going to see a lot of an alchemy. Yeah, there's some dumb stuff you can do. You can connoisseur copy on your opponent's draw step, basically taking away any card that they get and put it in the kind of the, the soft lock where they have to win with the tools that they've already got or find some way to, you know, instant speed draw a bunch of cards or whatever. Yep. That's pretty rude. Like you said, just a couple of uh, copying a gold span dragons, usually just GG after a turn or two, just because of the damage. Also of note, the Fable of the Mirror Breaker is one of the very few sagas that actually just straight up gives you two creatures, right? Like you just get one now 
and then it'll transform into one by chapter three. That isn't normally the case. Usually it's, it's some other form of onboard or card advantage or, you know, selection or whatever. And then you get a creature at the end, but this one, this one ends up uh, giving you two, just really powerful uh, on its face. So we got an interesting little spot here, in my opinion, because there's a removal spell over there in Power Word Kill. Hasn't been fired off just yet. You mentioned it on turn two, playing against two open mana. Well, now if you're Kenji, you're playing against four open mana. And so mm. how do you want to sequence this? You have three runes in your hand. You have great targets in Kami of Transience, or if you want to go the route here with the wolf token, sure. Uh, your naturalist didn't get killed right away. So does your opponent have a rule spell, or are they trying to, you know, bait you on in a little bit here? Yeah, and these are tough spots, right, for Samura. Like, he can't just do nothing, right? Like, is that an op is, is it an option for him to just be like, yeah, nah. go ahead? Nah, not with this deck. You, you got to make some moves. Yeah. Well, that move worked. Maybe he feels like, well, okay, I'll try another one then. Sure. sure. I mean, he is getting counters off of the, the Kami each time here, but this one's going to get a prompt power word kill to take down the wolf. Okay, so there's your first move. So the Kami's a 5-5 five, five now. The rune is gone. Now the question is, is do I do I go again? Yes. Do it. <laughs> what this could deck possibly does kind of... go wrong, Kenji? <laughs> yeah, this this deck does kind of play one way. This is the also this is the hedge, right? Is you you turn up the heat on Rangers class, you bring that to chapter two. Now your creatures continue to get better in combat, which is nice. You can attack with both, put a counter on the juke eye. There you go, make that into a 3-3 so it can win combat right now. And this is a healthy attack for eight. So that's not so bad of a turn. Yeah, that was great. Samura must be thrilled with the way that that came out. Uh, and the old post-combat rune of might. This is him setting up for lethal next turn. He actually has 10 power on the battlefield right now. Fable of Mirror Breaker will transform now. And as you can see, it becomes Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Indeed it and does. is that going to prompt a dragon? Yeah, here's Goldfan Dragon hitting the battlefield, but it looks a little small. Comparatively, I, I can't argue with you. Dragon? Yep, well, here we go. We're going to go beat down to both of these creatures. Remember, that little that's token little goblin, that's going to generate a treasure as well. So now access to four mana because of Goldfan Dragon, that's not so bad. Right, especially with another power word kill off the top of the library here for Kuma Guy. That allows him to reset this Kami of Transients. Yeah, he might be able to get it back later, but there was a lot of work put into that thing. It was a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler, and now it's just gone. And now it's time to rebuild here for Samura, and somehow he finds himself in a similar position, kind of just hoping for showdown. Yeah, that's been kind of at the top of my mind this entire time, is, you know, these games, as they play out, right, they get a little attrition-y, and then showdown kind of busts it open. But right. that hasn't happened yet. All right. And he's going to put the counter on the Naturalist. He wants to gain the most life, and it's a generous visitor off the top. Not great. Not quite enough. Now, he does get to crack in here for four, or I should say with five, with lifelink. Yep. And that's going to help out a lot. He's down to five as Kuma guy, plus Samura's up above 20 again at 22 life, unlikely to die in the next turn or two, so perhaps could buy himself enough time. But you got to feel like with reflection of Kikijiki on the battlefield that things are going to start falling apart. Yeah, if you're if you're Kenji, we, we've mentioned Showdown of the Skulls ad nauseum now, and I'm, I'm just going to keep continuing to mention it because that's kind of what I think the best draw is right now. Looks like he's going to leave Ranger class on top, so maybe bigger plans with that card. Generous Visitor, and then passing the turn back. I suppose we can't forget, right, Ranger's class is an enchantment. That'll trigger the Generous Visitors, plural. So yes. that's a thing as well. Yeah, that rune is really important there. Rune of Might, the giving trample. Right, yes. is going to make life difficult for Kuma Guy unless he can find a removal spell, which he hasn't. He's found an additional land here, and that means that, yes, double dragons on the battlefield, a pair of gold spans. But uh, he's only left himself four toughness back, and this could get out of hand very quickly, especially, again, I keep looking at that naturalist, Cedric, because of the lifelink really keeping the life total high here for Samura. 
So Kenji for single green can play Rangers class. That can trigger both generous visitors. You divvy some counters up, probably put it on the 2-2 two -two that has the rune on it because of trample, as you mentioned. So now we're looking at, what, a 5-5 five -five attacker and a 4-4 four -four attacker, most likely? He, he can level up the class before combat, too. Also so, that, too, yeah. yeah. He may just have enough to get the job done here. Because remember, the Jukai Naturalist is already lethal. Like, that, yep. th that, a creature is going to have to go in front of that to, to chump it. <clears throat> yeah, so now now the big question, because it's kind of face up, hands open. I, I have no cards in my hand. My opponent is not tapped out because of all those treasures. Mystery card in hand. Do you even consider playing your own removal spell? I don't think that Kenji really can at this point. So that's why I think the advantage is so heavily towards him. He's just going to go, yeah, I got to make this thing huge. You know, if you have a removal spell, if you have a removal spell, I can't beat another one right now. And I think he's come to that conclusion. So Wolf Token, level up this Rangers class, probably attack with a couple of creatures. You mentioned Naturalist and the Visitor. I don't know if he's going to want to attack with the other Visitor and then put those counters on the thing that has Trample and just say, good luck. Yeah, it's going to force some awkward blocks at the very least here for Kumagai. Kumagai's up a game here in our opener. If you're just tuning in, thanks so much for joining us. We're playing Alchemy. Yeah, we are. And uh, <laughs> and Kenji Samura, the Hall of Famer from Japan, finds himself mashed up against his teammate Riku Kumagai here in the uh, in the opener. And down. And this, the this is so easy to see on our side of things because we know there's no removal spell. It's a lot harder when you're actually you know in the in the pilot's chair there as Kenji is of. Okay, I guess I'm just going to put the counters and everything. I'm just going to shove all in on this and hope you don't have a removal spell. But ultimately, I think that's the right play to make, regardless of if there's a removal spell or not. They say, I hope that this breaks the way I need it to break. So we're going to see Reflection of Kiki Jiki make a dragon. Little double block. Oh, actually, single block action here. Well, you're going to get some trample damage through, which isn't so bad. Yeah, down to three goes Riku Kumagaya. Back up to 19. Once again, thanks to the Jukai Naturalist. And uh, it's just going to be really tough for Kumagai to come back without some form of... Uh, you know, big sweeper, removal, something. Not sure Town Razor Tyrant, now with a capital R, has a big effect <laughs> on the game. Or Is not. that alchemy only or <laughs> <laughs> Re rebalance the R? As, a, as an editor of things, capitalize that R. This one's been through the been through the ringer too of it rebalances has. because it it was an immensely powerful card. It is still totally fine, um, but they've slowed things down a little bit, which I think is for the best. So now three dragons plus reflection of Kiki Jiki. Oh, there's rune of sustenance off the top though for Samura, and that and is going to equal <clears throat> two additional plus one plus one counters. Both ranger classes at the ready as well. So yep. even just if this rune bricks on the draw step, he's got four counters to toss around. So much power and toughness this deck can produce. This is, you know, going back to our discussion in game one, Cedric, this is why we see these death touch creatures either main deck or even out of the sideboard for uh, for decks that are targeting this. Is that they're, Imagine if he just had one death touch creature at some point here. This would be a totally different game. That yeah, naturalist it, wouldn't be able to attack. He probably would have yep. won already. It, it it changes a lot if there's some death touch, if there are some death touch creatures involved. This turn, if you're Kenji, I think he's gonna probably play it similar to last turn, but it's worth thinking about, which is do you have a removal spell? Because that's the only thing that matters, right? And the lifelink doesn't matter so much. And remember, Rune of Sustenance doesn't grant any bonuses as far as power and toughness is concerned, right? The green one and the red one do, Rune of Sustenance doesn't. So you can actually, as Kenji did, put that rune on anything including your opponent's stuff to ensure that you get a little card draw action and get your counters and don't get your creature blown up in response so that's why you saw the rune go over on the mountain now you're going to see the the aforementioned attacks as you mentioned the wolf went from a 4-4 it might get even a little bit larger now because of the copies of ranger class so again i still think advantage kenji right now i like it too yeah the magic number here is five right kenji wants to get as many creatures up to at least five five and then after that you know, do what you will. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's three four fours with an additional one from Reflection uh, that will appear as well. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're at least eating those creatures and producing things where there's not one-for-one -one trades available without a double block. 
yeah, you're you're essentially forcing double blocks here, as you mentioned, and more or less saying, look, I don't think you have a removal spell. I'm not really going to play around a removal spell all that much. If you have one, it's annoying. Can't do much about it. So these are my best attacks to slowly but surely whittle away your battlefield so that my big creature can finally, you know, come across the finish line and deal the final three points of damage. Really in grind mode here for Kumagai to see if he can throw enough power and toughness in front of this massive attack force to just keep it at bay long enough. Also worth noting, Kumagai has uh, Katanuma Abandoned Mire in hand, and he can use that to buy back a creature at some point. It looks like he's also going to fire up the Hive of the Eye Tyrant off of the treasure tokens for additional toughness here and try to clear away some of these attackers. Yeah, because you get to go multiple double blocks and only lose some stuff, not lose all of your stuff. So you see double blocks with the Gold Fan Dragon on the Generous Visitor. That's a 6-6 six, six Trampler. Double blocks with the Town Razor Tyrant and the Hive of the Eye Tyrant on the 5-5, five, five, which means it'll take something out. And then maybe you'll see a single block on the Naturalist. Actually, okay, let's go this way and then just chump block the Wolf Token. Get the Naturalist and the Visitor off the battlefield because those have the most relevant text. The Wolf is just a 5-5 five, five with some counters on it. Whatever. So let's get the key creatures off of the battlefield, lose some stuff in the exchange, and then hope you can, I don't know, answer this wolf eventually. You know, is this Kuma guy pulling back ahead here, Cedric? Because this I think so. looks pretty good for him. Yep. And he, again, has the Takanuma in hand to buy back one of these dragons or whatever. Uh, it feels like Samura really needed to hit something other than Forest off of that last uh, rune. Uh, oh... Tamiyo safekeeping on the top? <laughs> I could have used that, but uh, yeah, I mean, might come have to up wait a, a turn. I'm going to say it might come up a little bit later. Not ideal right now. Uh, I guess Kamiya Transience is going to come back. That's a, that's a little bit of a bonus, getting that thing back into your hand. Cool. Um, you know, we can't forget about these Town Razor Tyrant triggers uh, because, look, some lands may be going away now instead of taking some damage, even though Kenji does have a lot of life to work with. Going to fall down to 21, but... If Boy, that removal... Tamiyo safekeeping would have really been nice instead of that forest. Yeah. Yep. Now, if a removal spell were to show up on that draw step, maybe, maybe you see Kumagai immediately just cast it to kill something. Mm -hmm. But it was just a land. Just a land, so nothing crazy. But Goldspan Dragon's feeling frisky, so here we go. And I think we're going to see Takanuma here get something back. Let's see what he hits off of this. It does mill three first, so it gives you some extra options potentially, but ultimately it's going to be the Tyrant again, which is a card that he can cast right now. Mm -hmm. Use up all of his mana. I guess that does mean that the uh, Reflection will not be activated this turn. In the meantime, the Town Razor Tyrant is just... Oh, I lied. There's a land. Yeah, there's a land to play. So this reflection can copy another copy of Town Razor Tyrant, and then you've got all sorts of Town Razor Tyrant triggers going on at the end of Kenji's draw step. The question, of course, is can Kenji actually get through for the W this turn? And once again, it doesn't look like it. And we also know Marshall that the top card is not very good. It's another pathway. Really tough here for Samura. He just has not had that explosive turn, right? Just that one turn where you chain two or three runes together and kind of go off it's like every other turn he gets to do something relevant but uh he's gonna fall behind so quickly he can lean on tamio safekeeping here to save the wolf token and eat up a uh a potential blocker as it's likely we'll see a, yeah, a so block it, here yeah so you're gonna see the single block if you're kenji you're begging for the double block right you're hoping mm. yeah double block i kill your real time razor tyrant so you can't keep copying it and i'm in the driver's seat a little bit because i've gotten your real creature off the battlefield but because these players have played together and everything else, yeah, I, I, you just don't really see that end up being the case. Here, you're just going to see single block now, maybe double block later, maybe yes, maybe no, because Trample's not really involved right now. So you don't really have to worry about anything. So that block is pretty straightforward there for Kumagai. And this game, the balance of this game is shifting. Before, it was previously, I think, pretty heavily in favor of Kenji. Now we're kind of seeing a more evenish game. Or, you know, again, if Kumagai's able to find a big draw step here, Maybe, maybe something like a Connoisseur with Death Touch. Copy that. This game shifts over to Kumagai in a huge way. No, a Connoisseur would be so devastating if he can rip one off the top. It really does feel like both players have options here <laughs> to find something. As you can see, though, boy, this town has been properly raised. Yeah. There are now four triggers going up, and that's going to eat up Samura's life total or land count. He really does want to keep 
his lands available as well. He has an active ranger class that he can use to to potentially chain creatures off the top. He's just kind of ran poorly here with these uh, with the land on top. So it looks like he may have to sacrifice a few lands, maybe keep a few of them around. But don't forget that Kumagai has the ability, right, to also activate reflections on his own turn mm -hmm. and say, okay, I'll copy Goldspan Dragon, attack you for, you know, 12 in the air. Wow. You know, if you get lazy with tracking your life totals. So these Town Raider Tyrants, the, that key, the, the ability, the enters the battlefield, you know, trigger all that other stuff, playing a huge role in things. You would think that Kenji, oh, he's got a ton of life to work with. Take two, take two, take two. No, you really got to think about it a little bit because, you know, if a Goldspan Dragon was the draw step, plus then reflection, copy a Goldspan Dragon, all of a sudden... Mm -hmm. Oops, you're yep. dead. You're dead. As it turns out, it's a braid off the top of the library, which is still a very good top deck there for Kuma guys. It's going to allow him to manage either the Visitor or the Kami of Transients. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's a braid. It's all about the timing of when you want to cast it. Do you want to cast it now and worry about Tamiyo safekeeping? Do you want to cast it maybe a little bit later? How do you want to balance and juggle your attacks right now because you didn't draw a creature? And how good is this removal spell going to be? Goldspan Dragon, I think, is the easiest attack, and that's the attack that Kuma Guy is going to make. So four more damage dealt, but dare I say, and we already know what what Kenji's draw step is going to be here. <sighs> now the next one isn't good either. I'm thinking advantage Kuma Guy now, Marshall. I am. I'm with you. I'm with you, Cedric. This just feels like this one's falling apart here for Samura. He was very, very close, really, truly close to winning this this game, but. Two lands off the top there and a safekeeping in between. That is not what he needed. He needs to see runes and he needs to get through this library. And he has not been able to do, do that thus far. And honestly, super impressive by reflection of Kiki Jiki here. Awesome. My, we're going to be seeing a lot of this card. This is a yep. card that people are stretching their mana base for. And we've got a really good showcase on why. That is the card that's kept Riku Kuma guy uh, in this game. Now, here is a little bit of the blowout. Tamiyo Safekeeping is going to be played in response to this abrade. Now, we're going to get a Reflections of Kiki Jiki activation in response. It's going to target one of these lands, of course, with the Town Razor Tyrant. But Tamiyo Safekeeping, timely. Going to give this permanent some uh, little hexproof and indestructible. And hey, sounds kind of crazy, but this two life that's being gained, that might matter too. It could. As it stands, though up to 13 and all kuma guy really needs to do is survive here mm -hmm. straightforward enough blocks yeah this would put him down to two yeah because you're, you're gonna get one trample two. right you get one trample through over the eye tyrant but two is plenty the town, and, uh, Razor, the town Razor Tyrant triggers, I think you just have to let these lands go now. Um, yeah. If you're Kenji, you can't take the two. And what is it? Three of the four lands have been raised? Two I, of them? I'm losing track. All this of villain. them? I mean, it's yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. I think there's two left, but we'll find out in a, in a short minute here. Yeah, it is two of them. The Forsaken Crossroads and that pathway... And yeah, Kenji's with you, said He's just like, okay. Oh, oh no, and there's there a gold it is. dragon off the top of the library. That's going to be four dragons attacking all this same turn. That's going to earn the good game concession from Kenji Samura. And Riku Kumagai picks up the first round. He gets his tournament off to just the kind of start you want, Cedric. A win, and even a win against what was at least previously the most popular deck in the format and against a teammate.